And with that, we're going to be bringing on our next guest, Patrick Small. He works in marketing. He also does a great deal of recruiting, and I'm very excited to have him on. Let's get him in here. There he is. Hello. How's it going? It's going good. Yeah, your background is very different today. You told me it would be. And I'm yeah, like, I'm, I'm at the office. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I wanted to kind of follow up. So Stephen's question, you know, talked about great ways to get attention and all that. And by the way, Stephen, where we were going with that is once you have their attention, you can tell them all those other very important things. You just need to get their attention and get them communicating with you first. Would you agree with that, Patrick? Oh, yeah. And when I was recruiting, like, I want to talk to people. Right. So it's not like you're bothering me or anything like that. Like, call, write, do whatever you got to do to get a hold of me, email, whatever it is. Like, I want to speak to you. So don't be afraid yes. to reach out. 100%, especially with recruiters, people that actually have the title recruiter, because mm -hmm. th like he said, that is their whole mentality is get them on the phone, get them on the phone, get them on the phone. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part of our jobs. The other question that he had was about using his LinkedIn profile as a resume. I would yeah, say great big no on that. No, I don't I don't use LinkedIn to make decisions about hiring. Right. So now, I'm using I, resumes, phone calls, things like that. And but that's just my personal style. Right. Yeah. Right. Now I will say I'm not a fan of the resume. I do think LinkedIn profiles are better because it gives you a lot more personal, plus you can see recommendations, things like that. Mm -hmm. I like LinkedIn profiles. I think it's great to also send those. But if you're using, if you're trying to use it as a resume, when you make that a PDF format, it comes across very weird and sometimes doesn't translate in certain ATSs, which is something you would have no way of knowing, Stephen. Um, so I'm not putting that off on you. But, um, but it, it's not an effective format. Definitely take the time to actually create a resume. If you need help doing that, I do know some great professionals that are very inexpensive. I'd be glad to refer them to you. Um, also, I mean, and oh, and, and do a good resume. Don't don't like, <laughs> don't just use a word for <laughs> Don't try to do it in 15 minutes and then you're like, all right, oh, that's good, I'm sending them in. Don't do that and brag. Um, that's the first thing I tell people if you're in any kind of sales or really anything. The first two to four bullet points on every single job should be your accomplishments. Hey, right. this is what I did, right? And, and tell them how, if you can put a number to it, like I increased sales by 23%, I lowered collections by 85%, whatever it is. You should definitely well, put that, right? What I would tell people is that when you're looking at the applicate or the actual job listing, look at the qualifications that they actually are requesting, like the minimum qualifications, and take those and make sure that your resume has those, at least those minimum qualifications in there, stated somehow, you know, so that people are, the people who are doing the matching are like, okay, this person has what we're looking for. So right. that way you get to the next part of the process. And that takes some time because you might have to change up the verbiage on your resume to match mm -hmm. what the job posting is, but when I was coaching people, when I worked for the state, that's what I would tell them. And they always made it through after that because it's right. easy to just say, okay, I have done this. Let me just make sure that it's listed on here so that they understand that I have done what they're asking. Right. Right. 100%. Oh, and mean, first of all, Stephen, yes, to answer your question, I have seen the downloaded uh, LinkedIn PDFs. They don't look like a resume. People don't like them. I couldn't care less because like mm -hmm. I said, I don't care about resumes anyway, but it, it, it's not going to be effective. And, and and when you put it into an ATS, sometimes it comes out looking weird. And again, that's not nothing you would know, but it can right. actually, the formatting doesn't look right. It doesn't line up the same way that it does just when it's on your computer. So don't do it. Don't use that. Um, but yeah, you want to align. Now I do tell people it is an insane, I saw a post a while back and I called this woman out on it. This. HR, quote, quote, pr professional <laughs> or expert, as she was trying to portray herself, was telling people to spend an hour and a half looking at each and every job description and matching their resume to it. Yeah. Went, no. <laughs> do no not you do shouldn't that. have to do that. If you have a good resume, you should not have to do that anyways. Like, that just tells me you don't have a good resume if you have to spend that much time or, yeah. yeah, either you're creating your resume from scratch, basically, right. right? Or you're not a fit and you're trying to make yourself a fit. Right. And that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Yeah. Right. When you're looking what he I just want to kind of and I just want to kind of clarify what we're saying to do with your resume when it comes to updating it is little tweaks. Just little tweaks because 
if you're a good fit for the position, the meat and potatoes should already be there. And there's just right. maybe one or two things that you need to highlight as opposed to having them in the background because a resume can't possibly show everything that you do. Right. right. That's what we're saying. Like little tiny tweaks that should take like five minutes, not mm -hmm. an hour and a half. Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't be submitting one resume for every job. You know, it right. should be a little bit to tailor it to that position. That way you're actually getting somebody's attention because what you guys were talking about earlier about people submitting like 300 applications, you know, they're sending the same application into all these different jobs. And that's why they're not getting callbacks. Like you need to demonstrate right. that you have the specifics, specific skills or qualifications for that particular right. job. Yeah. Right. 100%. Well, What's funny though, is that we're talking about how to get recruiters to respond to applicants. I'm having a problem getting applicants responding to me. Me too. Are you? Okay, all right, let's talk about that. Let's Oh my gosh. Oh, first of all, real quick, we did have a question and no okay. length of resume does not matter, that's fine. Like don't make it like 10 pages, but if it's like uh, two to four pages, that's fine, whatever, who cares? Right. Um, but but yes, candidates, I'm, I'm having candidates and actually, they're not, they'll tell me that they're interested. And then I asked to set up an interview and nothing. Yep. They, I've had a lot of no call, no shows lately, which is not normal for me. Mm -hmm. I, I used to have a very, very low ratio. And I've talked to other recruiters who are experiencing that too. And I'm very curious as to why. Okay. All right, good. I'm glad it's not me because I have five clients right now and three of them are having this problem. And yep. I'm calling people to schedule interviews because I got their resume. You know, they've made it through step one. I'm like, okay, I got everything. I'm ready to schedule an interview with you. Maybe do a quick phone interview. I call them, leave a message, don't hear back from them. And then I'll follow up with an email too. And they just, I just won't hear from them. And I'm like, what is yeah. going on right now? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and I'm experiencing this with all different types of positions, um, to be clear. Yeah. Sales, yeah. manual labor, yeah. uh, a, a product owner type position. I'm going a civil engineer position. I'm like, what right. is All this? Right. This makes me it's feel better. I'm like, am I not doing something? It's right. okay. All right. I'm like, is it me? I'm like, how is this me? I, I do this every day and I have been, have been getting results until recently. Right. Right. And, yeah. and I get it. Like you might have other stuff going on. Like I said earlier, like I get it with the, yeah. um, Oh, and here we go. We had a comment. A lot of people collecting unemployment have to apply to three to five jobs. Oh, well, three to five jobs per week is bare minimum, sweetheart. You should be applying to more jobs than that. Okay, let's just put three right. to five jobs a week. You should be doing more than that. Uh, we were just saying don't take an hour and a half or so to apply yeah. to each one. But I think That's what she's problem. saying is that they're just applying to jobs to, pr to prove oh. that. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. don't do that. It's, either. A, it's a requirement. That's okay, yeah. I guess. I guess that's okay. Like I get that, but, but why would you apply to a job that you don't actually want? And, and if, and if it's only three to five, you should be able to find three to find three to five jobs you actually want. Well, no, she's apply. saying these people don't, which I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm just trying to understand maybe what she's saying. She's saying that these people do not want to get a job, but they have to show that they're trying for the unemployment office. Maybe, maybe so that's it. I don't know because the, 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 the positions, the positions I work with, they don't make near on unemployment what they do I, in real life. I know, I know. Yeah, I don't understand how you can survive if you're just on yeah. unemployment. Right. No, yeah, if you're, like, yeah, if you're like in, in a true professional type position and stuff like that, yeah, I don't see how. But it, always apply to jobs you actually want, first of right. all. Um, oh, yeah, she, that's what she's saying. I don't think they want a job, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. Like if you're if you're applying and then just not calling back, yeah. you just I mean that's the it seems like that could that could be a possibility because I mean this is happening for a couple different clients, like I said, of different kinds of positions. So it could just be that they're throwing out these resumes for, for, for our I you know what I want to know, and, and and anybody watching, please feel free to jump in on this what your thoughts are, are people afraid to get a job right now? Like the people that have been unemployed for let's say 10, 12 months because of COVID, are they afraid to get another job? Right. Are, are they, is there something, because that can happen. There can be yeah. psychological. Oh yeah. I'm afraid to go into a store. Right? I could definitely be afraid to go into an office and get a job for sure. I can, right. I can that. Or they, yeah, they don't want to be around people, you know, maybe some. Right. 
mode, yeah. Well, that, and that's true too. Yeah, maybe it's a COVID thing. Maybe yeah. I'm very intrigued. I want feedback, and we're getting some good comments here. Uh, okay. Unemployment, I think, and, and again, um, I think unemployment could be it for lower paying jobs, but anyone who's used to making, you know, let's say, 70k plus they're not making right. they're making maybe half that and yeah, that's right now. yeah, that's a completely yeah different so story. i don't know why they would they would just want to stay on unemployment I mean, maybe but yeah. i i don't know um and if you make 60 percent of your wages plus uh plus 300 per week yeah i mean it just depends on what your wages are in your position i mean who knows but it is a weird market right now and that's something i've been trying to explain to companies because they have this idea that oh well I, all the job market saturated with candidates. I'm going to get somebody like that. Ha ha ha. Yeah. I can just be as, as picky. I can pay as low as I want. I'm like, <laughs> no, that's you not been what my experience. I mean, what you were no. talking about earlier, I liked uh, about the whole start date thing. That, right. that was interesting. I had a situation like that where it wasn't a start date situation, but the, but the company was just like, we need more applicants because we're not hiring enough. And it turns yeah. out that their actual problem was when they had to do the federal application to hire their employees because they're regulated, that the people were just not filling out the federal application. So they were making it like two or three steps through the hire process, and not just filling the it. application. And the company was just like, we need to cram more people into the meat grinder so we can get them to the end of it. But the problem is not how many applicants we were providing them. It's that the cutoff was at this other application. They right. had to do. People were not filling it out. Right. And and I've seen that as well. I think that there are a few things going on number in the in the market. And people, please, please keep drop in your comments. I'm loving this. I, I love the interaction. I love to see people's thoughts on this. So a few things. Number one is that I'm seeing the people that just don't want to take those long steps. It's like, okay, oh my God, this hire process is ridiculous. Okay. I'm just not doing it. Yeah. Like this, this is just a waste of my time. People start to get stressed by a really long hire process. Yeah. And I've, I've had to coach clients in the past that had to do things like that because if they're government regulated, there's only so much they can do, right? So I tell them, do it in one setting, go through it with them, you mm -hmm. know, make it kind of a process, kind of involve them. That and, and sometimes they'll still bail on you, but it's kind of the most effective way I've found. The other thing that I'm finding too is that um, candidates are better educated. Because they've watched a lot of shows, they've done a lot of webinars during COVID because they didn't have anything else to do. So the 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 companies that were trying to pull stuff and like underpay or have or they didn't care about their interview oh, process. Yeah. We can treat people yeah. however we want to treat them. They'll just come to us. Those days are gone. Right. And, and employers are struggling to realize that. Like these candidates are educated. They know to negotiate. They know what to ask for. They know what to look for. They know what's important to them. And if you're not putting it out there you're going to lose people. Right. Yeah. You they want to hire, work for somebody who has the same values as them and somebody who pays good, treats their employees good and things like that. And I mean, you can look like glass door, you know, or even, even yes. like if yes. that information is there at your fingertips. All you got to do is Google the company's name and you can see whether or not they, uh, they treat their employees good and what everybody says. 100%. Yeah. And, and you're right, Daryl. Um, some people are picky and, and companies are, or the companies are picky and then they're dropping the wages because they think they can get away with stuff. No. And I will tell you guys, if you're out there job seeking, don't fall for that. Don't do it. Go look, this is what I'm worth. If you want me to come work for you, I will, yeah. but here's what I'm worth. Yeah. And this is just it, yeah. you know? And if you want to keep talking to me, I'm all about it. Let's yeah. do it. But this is what I'm worth. And you yeah, need to every, know. Everybody's hiring. So, I mean, you should not have a problem finding a job, you know? Right. Like, you know, there's there's so many jobs out there right now. Like one of the um, one of the companies that I, I help with does CDL drivers, and yep. the amount of CDL jobs out there right now is just astronomical. It is. It is a man. Anything man. Oh my god. Anything manual labor. Sales jobs are blowing up. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing sales jobs left and right. Yeah. Um, and, and so one thing too, I've also been telling companies on, on my client list is you better treat your salespeople right because there's a right. lot of people out there looking right now and they, they're salespeople yeah. can go find a job like that yeah. right They don't now. have to stay. Absolutely. They do not have to stay. There's so many options yeah. right now. It's the same thing with the CDL drivers. I mean, that's, that's yeah. actually, I guess, what's happening in the industry part, part of that is that sign-on bonuses. 
Yeah. So you, you know, you get your sign on bonus and you're there for like three months or whatever it is. And then you can go to another company, get another sign on bonus, make it your three months. And I guess that's kind of like something that's keeping the, the job pool sparse with all this job hopping that's going on. Right. Right. And I yeah. think too, I think that, yeah, the job hopping has been kind of interesting. Um, and I think too, that I think a lot of candidates are, like I said a second ago, I think they're in panic. I think they're just like, ah, I just have to get a job. And then they get something and they go, wait a minute, this sucks. Oh, so yeah. One, okay. One, right. And, and yeah, one thing I, that I, wanna, that. I, I see it. And, and I, one thing I want to stress to candidates is I know that the job market is scary. I know that sometimes you just have to take a job to take a job. And that's okay. But don't panic yourself into it. Make it a calm, rational decision. Just yeah. go, okay, this isn't really what I want, but I'm here for now. I'll eventually find something I want mm -hmm. and just roll with that if that's what you need to do. Or if you're in a position to do it, just go ahead and still wait for that company that's going to be exactly what you, or not exactly, but that's going to fit into what you actually want. Yeah. And you then, have options. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's okay. And, and look for companies that align. That really is, I tell everybody when in my entire working career, the, the jobs that were the best fit that I got the quickest were when I stopped and said, okay, what do I want to do? And then found companies that aligned with that. I ended up working for the travel partner to the Dallas Cowboys. Awesome. Got hired almost immediately for that. Okay. Um, I, I worked in the animal industry for a while, loved it, you know, loved that experience because I love animals and and you just find different things. When I decided I finally wanted to, you know, to get into recruiting, I did that and I got it like that. It, it's, you just have to find, when you do that, when you stop and go, wait a minute, what do I like? What? Yeah, and that, invest your time right. in figuring that out versus going through 50 different job applications and submitting them. Invest your time mm -hmm. into finding these companies that you like, researching them, making sure it fits with you and then take your time developing that relationship. Exactly what you were just talking about before with the recruiter, right. the relationship with the recruiter. And instead of going through 20 companies, you know, you're going through 10, you know, same amount of time right. though, because of all the research that you're doing, but you're not just, you know, throwing stuff to the wall. Like she was saying and just seeing what sticks. Yeah. Exactly. You don't want to, you don't want to do the pasta experiment, yeah. right? That's not, that's not going to work. And the other thing that, that's been cracking me up too that I've been seeing right now is that a lot of uh, candidates and guys, this is a big tip, pay attention to this. A lot of candidates are forgetting that employers are checking your LinkedIn and your Facebook right now. And everybody goes, but my Facebook is private. <laughs> yeah. <that> <laughs> if, I I think, if I can I can get on there and see all kinds of stuff, trust yeah. me, that yeah. company that has a whole IT department absolutely can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had a super qualified person. I sent it to the hiring manager or actually who manages the position, checked the person's Facebook and was like, we, we don't want this person. And I was like, right. oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. it professional. You know, you, you, know, you don't have to put every one of your thoughts on Facebook. You, know? you do not. You yeah. can just keep scrolling. You can yeah. just, just keep yeah. scrolling. Talk to your friends in person about that stuff or on the phone. You know, right. you don't have to put it on the town square board for everybody. It's, right. It, it just don't be. And, and what I tell people is it's OK to post like, OK, like I live by the beach. It's OK to post pictures of you at the beach. It's OK to post pictures with your kids. It's OK to post that you went out with your friends. But maybe don't post you holding a giant glass of wine just because it right. can look a little like, oh, God, is, is this person a lush? Um, yeah. It Don't don't push and don't comment hateful things, especially on LinkedIn guys, because oh, what you yeah. may not realize is if I go and click on your activity, I can see everything that you've commented to. So yeah. especially on LinkedIn, but it's true on Facebook too. Just don't be nasty. You can say what you think without being awful and disrespectful and yeah. do not, if you are job searching, post anything political. Don't yeah. do it. I wasn't going to say that because it was political, but for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do not yeah, put any say it, but <laughs> don't put any political memes up, you know, don't do any of that stuff because yeah, no, yeah, people, people are looking at those and you know, they, they have to project a certain image for the organization That's and right. they don't want customers or whoever looking people up that, you know, they find out work at the organization like, Oh, I'm not doing business with this person anymore because of all this right. stuff. Facebook, and right. like, yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've, had it happen. 
I've had it happen. I I had a candidate and who was, um, and this has nothing to do with my personal opinion. I'm just putting out the actual truth Mm -hmm. of what happened, who posted a bunch of negative stuff about Trump. I mean, really graphic, graphic things. And, and then said, um, and then my client said, I can't work with this person because a lot of my clients are Republican right. and they're going to be offended by that. Right. And it wasn't yep. even that the employer disagreed with them. It was just, yeah, yeah, you put this all out, like, come on. And yes, right. I know it can be hard to do in the DC area. <laughs> no. And I'm, and I, you know, I mean, I own my own business, so I can, I, you know, I don't have to worry about it as much, but it, it's just, and I get it folks. I get it on these heated topics. And I'm not saying don't post black lives matter that's, you know, that's okay. Don't, don't be hateful and don't be gross and don't post anything about a political party or a political candidate. You can say things like, I'm sad about this shooting. That's okay. That, that's right. that's a, like, who's going to argue with that? Like, you know, or if they do, you definitely don't want to work with them. You know, just um, because you should, or just because you can, doesn't mean you should, you know? Right. Like, right. Yeah. Just, just go, down that. Now some good things to do with your social media. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. I think like one of the things I tell people to do is to post things that showcase them as an expert. Like for me, I work in recruiting, so I can post candidate tips, hiring tips, um, tell funny stories about what's gone on with me. What are some of your tips that you would tell people to put in their social media? Uh, I mean, uh, just to be perfectly honest, like I am the worst person to ask about that. (laughs) And I'll just, I'll tell you why. It's because I work in social media every day. And like, I don't like using it unless I have to, for work, you know, because <laughs> it is just all day doing posts and things like that for, for right. companies that I work for and things like that. It's just like, right. I don't want to see it after I'm done for the day. But yeah, <laughs> you know, the thing is, I mean, just cultivate the image that you want people to see you as, Right. you know, have good pictures of yourself on there, you know, mm-hmm. activities that you do, hobbies and things like that. Like it's a projection. You know, so right. project this positive, good image so that people who see it are going to want to interact with you and talk to you. I mean, and that right. covers pretty much everything about it. Like it doesn't pictures, write comments, posts, things like that. I mean, don't treat it as your personal bulletin board. If you're, right. if, you're if you're job seeking and things like that, like you need to treat it as your professional projection so that when people such as yourself look at it, they're like, okay, there's no red flags here. Before yeah, I even talk Let's talk to them 100%. And, and the biggest thing is don't have red flags, but then representing yourself while well and projecting that image is good because it helps to complete the, the picture. You, yeah. you want to control the picture that people have of you, especially yeah. in, in the job search, 100%. Yeah. So the thing I want to kind of wrap up talking about, because I get this a lot from candidates, is I'm experiencing discrimination, whether it's ageism, which is huge. It's the number one form of discrimination in the marketplace right now. Um, because of your LBGTQ, because you're um, a woman, because of what I don't, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is hard because these things do happen and it sucks. And a yeah. lot of people don't even realize that they're doing it. By the way, guys, I've called people out on it and I've learned how to do it in a way because a lot of my clients don't know that they're doing that. And they go, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it's a tough one. And and I've had people ask me, well, how do I overcome that? How do I get past it? And I, th- I want to start with ageism. Let's start with ageism since it's the number one. What are some things that you would recommend as, as a recruiter um, to help people overcome the ageism factor? So are we talking about overcoming from an applicant perspective or from yes. an employee perspective? From, from an, an applicant, applicant perspective. perspective. Well, don't put your your date of birth on your application. Oh, that's number one. Yeah, please you don't. Know? Do that. And, and I've seen you know that. what else people do is they put their they put their pictures on these applications. I mean, what do you think about that? I'm not trying to sidebar too much, but what do you think? No, about I don't that? like pictures on resumes. It all it can it doesn't nothing good happens of it. First okay, of all, half all right, of them are right, completely okay. weird. Half of them okay. are totally weird. I've gotten like yeah. that, you know, like the thumbs up and like weird face. Yeah. Like why? Yeah. Okay, so don't do that. You know, don't do that. I mean, when your when your resume, you know, I don't know why you would need identity. I mean, how, see, okay. So my background was when I worked for the state. That's why I did most of my recruiting. Right? We had a right. standardized hire process. 
And that got, right. and we did that because that got rid of a lot of these problems that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no, I don't, I don't even know. To, so just tell me this, and I, I truly, how do you know how old somebody is when you're looking at their resume? So one of the things that gives people away a lot are dates of graduation and dates of employment. I see that all the okay. time. So one of the things I tell people is do not put the date that you graduated from college. Just put okay. that you have the degree. The okay. other thing is don't go. And, and this is true for anybody. This has really nothing to do with ageism, although it does help with it. Don't go back further than seven, maybe 10 years. In your right. Ex exactly that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, like just simple little things because it, it that. Oh, and this is this was a funny one that I, I heard from a, a previous guest that I'm going to go ahead and reshare this. Don't have an AOL email address. Oh, <laughs> nobody has. Them. That's like, awesome. That's going to make it. That's going to like yeah. right off the bat make them. I think see those it. pretty pretty regularly. Yep. And yeah. and what happens? And people always go, "Oh, you're super yeah. old." <laughs> My first thought is AOL still has email. Like. <laughs> Is that right. true? I mean, does your email right. work at this point? Yeah, does because, it work? Yeah. Is that? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe that's why I'm not getting some responses because I'm emailing these AOL emails. Maybe, maybe that's it. But yeah, it's don't do it, guys. It's seen as an inferior domain. Gmail or Yahoo tend to be the top, the top two right. that people yeah. have Outlook. or Outlook. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of this has to has comes down to how the recruiter has been trained to do this kind of stuff. You know, like to do the screening and things like that. Uh oh, we froze. So I'm just going to keep talking. All I see is uh, your frozen picture. Yeah, there we go. Now we got okay. you. Were now I can hear you. I there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. so, so I think that, you know, um, a lot of people who do hiring were not, are not properly trained to do hiring. That's very true. Yeah. Yes. So they're doing these things and they may not even realize that. I think you just said that, that it's yeah. a discriminatory practice. So I think it that is. that's kind of yeah. starting at the root cause is that if somebody is going to be doing hiring, they need to be properly trained on how to hire yes. to avoid these situations. And that, would, that would help from the, from step number one. 100%. I could, yeah. I cannot, that's a whole other show that I've done is on yeah. the other side, like recruiters, this is silly. Let's, let's help you out yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah. Because it's so true. You have to know what you're doing. And even hiring managers, it's not just recruiters and HR. If you're involved in hiring at all, you need to be trained exactly. on what you're doing and what to actually look for. Like yeah. I, I tell people all the time, I have, I have clients ask, well, I need this many years of experience. No, you don't. You need an expert. Right. That's what you need. You don't need right. that many years. You need somebody who's really good at it. <laughs> yeah, that's why yeah. I was brought in is because mm -hmm. of some, some clients because of that right there because they're doing the um, either the emotional hiring mm -hmm. or they don't really know how to screen people versus screen people for the minimum qualification that they need for the job because of exactly what you right. said. They have the, they could just come up with this random number of I need five years of experience and it's like well that's not really yeah. that much that job's not that hard where you have to have somebody who needs five years yeah. of experience to file paperwork yeah that's yeah. silly that's, yeah. that's just completely stupid yeah I see that kind of stuff all the time and it just makes me go bonkers I work with clients on it constantly another one so you get racism gender all of that what I what I tell people in general is um now there was an extreme example in my past. And before I, I say this, I want to tell the extreme example. I had a, a young woman years and years ago before I even had my own company. And her name was Swastika. Now, mm -hmm. in her country, that right. had a completely different meaning. Right. Oh, yeah. But she was applying to jobs and people were not reaching out to her. And she was extremely qualified and she was frustrated. And so I told her. I'm so sorry. I understand what this means in your country. It's a beautiful name for you. I, I love it. But, mm. but you have to understand that to the outside world, this means something else. Right. And so I recommended to her using her middle name. Use your middle name. That's exactly what I was going to say. Use your middle, Use your middle name. name. Now, yep. They don't even now. know your first name until they go through the background check. That's right. Now, yeah. now. Uh, now, first of all, don't ever use a nickname. That's weird. Don't yeah. don't put Nick if your name is Nicholas. You know that. No, don't put Katie if your name is Catherine. Don't do that. But and also, if you have an ethnic name of some kind um, or a culturally based name, don't feel the need to change it because if they're going to oh, discriminate yeah. against you for that, you don't want to work with them anyway. Right. Right. 
but <laughs> on the off chance that your name is somehow offensive, because I've, I've seen other, I've had recruiters tell me other examples as well, mm -hmm. then you want to change it. So if there's something that you can help that you know is not your fault, but it's just, you know, whatever, just then change it, alter it, that kind of thing. Also your email, please do not send sexually explicit emails oh on your resume. Gosh. <laughs> I've had porn star 69 as an email. Oh yeah. Not kidding. I've gotten, I've gotten not kidding. I've gotten on the resume. On the resume. Yeah. And I'm going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, and so that is, that is part of the training on the, the applicant side. You know, it was like, a lot of people that I spoke to, they just fill out a resume like they've never had any kind of like instruction on right. like these things on how to make sure you're more successful getting through. But once you <laughs> explain these things to them, it's just an automatic like this makes perfect sense. Right. And, you know, it, it's it's just that, that for whatever reason, they just have never been exposed to somebody who's been on the other side taking Most the time to help them. Mm -hmm. Most people have yeah. not over 90% and there's multiple studies showing this over 90% of the population does not know how to effectively create a resume. Wow. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, over 90%. I That's believe it though. I, I mean, I, I do yeah, for a hundred percent. Look at the crazy resumes we get all the time. Yeah. 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 That's, so that, I, that doesn't surprise me. On yeah. that note, guys, it and don't go to just a random resume writing service because a lot of them are crummy and they don't actually know what they're doing. They just put your stuff into a word format and charge you money for it. And it's ridiculous. If you would like help creating an effective resume, updating your LinkedIn profile, any of that, please reach out to me because I know some very affordable professionals who will guide you through that process. And if, and here's a good way to spot somebody who's a shyster. If they're not communicating with you and getting you on the phone to create your resume, they don't know what they're doing. Okay, there's no way that you can create an effective resume without having a real conversation with that person and understanding them. Yeah. And the other right thing is. is, if you have dealt with a recruiter and let's say you didn't get the job, contact them and find out what you can do to improve either your resume yes. or your interview skills. I did that all the time. I offered it when we were doing skills testing. I'm like, if you don't pass this test, I'm like, contact me. I can go over the test with you. And mm -hmm. I can show you the answers that you got wrong. I can't give you the right answer, but I can show right. you the answers that you got wrong. So that way, when you do this again, you can be you can improve your score. Or same thing with the resume or with the application on the resume. You know, like if you didn't make it through step one, contact me. I'll be more than happy to go over with you because I want to hire you. Yes. You know, not, like I'm not the yes. gatekeeper to stop people. I want people to make it through the gate, but we just have certain things that have to be have to happen before that can happen. So right. uh, take the time to contact the recruiter. And I'll tell you, I offered that every every time I did a hire package. I probably had maybe one or two people, maybe out of hundreds. Contact yeah, they don't. They don't. I offer right. I offer specific feedback to everyone who even applies. Actually, it's at the bottom of the email. You know, if I now you get a personalized email from me with specific feedback if I've interviewed you, but if you've just applied. You get an email saying, you know, I'm sorry, we're going to pass at this time, basically. But then it says, if you would like specific feedback as to why mm -hmm. you were rejected, yeah. please reply yeah. back. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. It's only going to make you better. I mean, that's in this process. Yeah. Constructive yeah. feedback. So I want to thank you so very much for joining me today, Patrick. You. you were absolutely a great resource. And so tell everybody how they can contact you. Uh, you can contact me on LinkedIn under Patrick Small. And my well, that's pretty much it. I would say my <laughs> link professionally, you can uh, you can contact me. Don't be looking me up on Facebook and seeing all the crazy stuff I post. On. Yeah, don't 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 look either of us up on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm and quiet. I do I do want to specify that because I've had a lot of people recently trying to trying to connect with me on Facebook. Guys, I will not connect with you on Facebook, but if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah. And message me. I am right there with you. I will. I will communicate with you. So, thank you again for joining me, Patrick. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. All right. Thank you. It was great. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care.